another gift from Vince the Crew Chief on the job I'm currently working on. It's another uh, audience illuminated wristband, but this one is RF controlled. And it was in a bit of a state because it had uh, got wet at some time and, and it had been a bit corroded, but it's not bad. And the front comes off. There's a couple of screws underneath. The front comes off, uh, revealing a compartment for presumably two, two or three twos. There were no cells in at the time. And there's a flexible silicone wristband. Notable that the connection to the battery is this really stout spring in here uh, that connects onto the side at the back for the positive. And the circuit board inside looks like this. It's got, well, let's zoom down a little bit. It's got a couple of chips, one in an area with an RF antenna going around the outside, and then one in the middle, the ubiquitous 8-pin chip. And there is a mysterious transistor down here. I'm not sure if that's part of the powering on circuitry or not. Uh, nothing really major on the back other than the negative battery contact and two more LEDs. So there's two side-emitting LEDs. They seem to point out the side, and these ones seem to point in the way. So there's four of these LEDs. Um... Well, okay, let's uh, reverse engineer it. I'll take a picture of this, reverse engineer it, and we can explore the circuitry. One moment, please. And resume. So we do have a generic 8-pin chip here, common microcontroller, a switch, a little button on the side that you can click on the side of the unit. We've got a dedicated RF receiver chip here with a crystal, and then we've got the LEDs which contain uh, their common positive here, and they've got a red, green, and blue chip inside them. These ones are pointing in the way. Oh, they've actually got a little arrow point, possibly hinting at that. But on the other side of the circuit board, they actually, well, they're showing it again. They point out the way. So that's for even illumination. So that the ones in the back are kind of lighting probably into the band to make it sort of glow. And the other ones are lighting into the sort of front of the unit to make it uh, a light as well. And... Um, Anything interesting about the circuitry? Yes, there's this transistor down here, which controls the RF section. Uh, let me show you the schematic for this, because that will make things much clearer. Just in case you aren't aware, this is an audience wristband that when you put it on your audience members, with RF control, you can during the show you can actually make them light up. They, they first appeared ages ago, like 2012 in Coldplay with a, an, under the brand name Xyloband. I'm not sure who manufactures these ones. But uh, it was a, such a popular idea that uh, Xyloband have been ripped off rotten by many companies since. They've, uh, many copies have been produced. So this one presumably uses two CR232, which will make quite a high voltage rate of 6 volts. So they're probably pushing the microcontroller to its sort of upper voltage limit. All uh, three colours of LEDs are in parallel with just a single resistor. I measured the resistors in circuit. They're tiny resistors, um, no mark value marks in them. It was about 360 ohm for the red, which has got the slightly uh, lower forward voltage, therefore there's more to drop, and 330 ohm for the uh, blue and green. There was a button uh, going to the zero volt rail for uh, turning it on, presumably. Maybe even put it into an automatic mode once. Uh, although, generally speaking, they don't want to do that because they want control over it. They don't want the audience finding ways to actually turn the lights on themselves but because uh, that would disrupt from the effect. But there's a 5.6K resistor, which is a standard value. Going up to this uh, transistor, a 2A PNP transistor, which actually switches on the uh, RF section. So I'm guessing that the microcontroller can go into a low current sleep mode, but the RF section, because it's always active and uh, waiting for an RF signal, it potentially has to uh, be turned off just to save current. So the microcontroller probably uh, only turns it on. Now I'm wondering, the microcontroller can be woken by this button. And then it could turn on the RF, or if it was in a standby state, it might just pull the RF every so often and just look for that signal to be present. Or it might just be they're using this button as a simple means to activate everything just by waking the microcontroller up and then it turns the RF on. One oddity here, the C1 and L1 look as though they're in the wrong position here, but it might just be the markings on the circuit board, because if you look at that shiny white component there, it's L2, and this is also uh, the white component, which may be the inductor, and the C2 uh, is the same colour as this 
uh, one Martel one. So they may both be capacitors, and that would kind of fit because um, the guide to this particular chip the data sheet for it uh, shows the output with a capacitor to the zero volt rail, an inductor, capacitor zero volt rail, and then the antenna with another inductor to the zero volt rail. RF is such a science. Um, so I've drawn it as the manual has it, but if these were um, actually a capacitor and inductor, which I don't think they are, I think they've just got the markings wrong, but I could be wrong here. Uh, then theoretically that would be an inductor down there and a capacitor there and I don't think that is the case, but it might well be. I'm not an expert in RF, maybe there are other configurations for this chip. But that is it. It's a, a very straightforward type of thing. Um, you basically have the audience comes in, they're given these wristbands, and then during the show, uh, at specific points when they want the audience to light up a specific colour, uh, they send the RF signals uh, from antennas mounted around the stadium to actually activate the bands and make them illuminate. I don't know if this has the ability to receive data as well. I think it might just be, uh, should I say, send data. I think it's just receiving. I, I don't know if you could selectively program them to different addresses. I kind of doubt it with this one, but I could be wrong. But there we have it. The RF version of the audience interactive illuminated wristband. It's actually quite simple inside. It's quite a neat little device. 